internally, right? When when we, when I speak with some people internally, some compliance guys internally that also work in one or two fintechs, right? The, the assumption is always that um, we we always laugh about it that um, it, it seems like if if it seems like your first out of your first one thousand users on every new platform, like seems like like maybe twenty to thirty percent of them are fraudsters or something like that, because it it seems like fraudsters are always like the first adopters, right? For for every major <laughs> stuff that comes up, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's a common joke within the like we just within the space. Um, but it's a very important question that you've asked and one that um, one that lots of that is very uh, pregnant to how almost all fintechs, almost all fintechs operate today, right? Um, so how do you how do you fight how do you fight um, fraud, cyber crime, money laundering, and related crimes? Firstly, you need to take your KYC seriously. Your your if you really want to, if you're really serious about fighting fraud and and and, and crime, right? Um, you need to take your AML seriously. Um, you need to take your KYC seriously. You need to truly, truly know your customer, right? And knowing your customer is beyond just the ID verification that you do, right? It's it goes beyond that. You need to you need to study the pattern of customers' transactions and stuff on your platform, just basically for you to understand the users properly um, before you. Um, that that way you can get to you can get to um, at the minimum understand how they behave and you can act accordingly. Then um, something that I also see is that um, you need to take AML checks seriously. Um, spend where spends whatsoever in getting AML checks services. Um, AML checks uh, that's anti money laundering, right? Um, AML checks are not are usually not cheap. I don't know whether Verify B does AML checks for Nigerians, but uh, for Nigerian businesses, but I know that most of the companies that, most of the services that we plug into for AML checks are mostly foreign companies and they charge in dollars. These things are not cheap at all, right? And um, yeah, but like you need to like just, again, it's it's a problem for when you are a small company, you really do not want to do some of these things. So, so a lot of small tech companies rely on rely on their payment processors to, to, to do some of these checks for them, right? Again, because if you are processing monies, <clears throat> Um, you want to be sure that the you want to be sure that um, you are using payment processors that do ML checks and stuff, right? So that you don't get to take up that cost. But by the time you get up to a certain level as a tech company and you begin to get a lot of users, um, you should take up that cost on your own and also try to understand your customers yourself, right? So take ML seriously. Um, I think I've also talked about being able to identify the final beneficiary of every transaction on your platform. Um, um, you can do this by taking the KYC process also seriously. Um, then you also need to just like, um, uh, you also need to take enhanced due diligence um, very, very serious. You have to carry out enhanced due diligence for users that are already on your platform, um, users that are already on your platform, right? So KYC is like the first step. Um, then in, even before the user comes on, before the user gets to transact on your platform, you have to do KYC, you have to do AML checks. But while the user is even on your platform, right, if you see anything suspicious, you have to do enhanced due diligence on the user and just keep doing consistent and constant checks on the user, on the users to ensure that um, they still fit into the trench hoods that you've set for yourself compliance wise, right? Um, you also like, um, I, and this is something that, that in, in most fintechs, right, um, business team do not like to hear, right? As a compliance guy, you don't need to be scared about losing customers, right? Um, um, don't be scared about losing customers because, because you're asking questions around transactions or because you're asking questions um, or because you're asking, um, you're trying to do enhanced due diligence, right? Don't be scared about losing customers. Once you set your threshold, you stick to it. When you begin to manipulate your threshold and you begin to, to adjust a bit to taking certain users, that is how you, that is how you fall into... A, a, a very bad trap where you know you now begin to lose sight of what your actual thresholds are and then you can like frost frauds can pass through your system and stuff right so don't be scared about losing customers one bad user can make you lose your license or even worse like put you in jail right um you should define your threshold of what is acceptable to you as a business right what level of ids do you want to collect that suits your business um um, would you accept politically exposed persons or not, right? Would you would you accept a user that does not have a BVN or is unwilling to provide this BVN, for example, in Nigeria, right? Um, there are just lots of questions, right? Uh, would you take in cash deposits? 
if you are depending on the kind of business you are you are right would you take in cash deposits if you deal in foreign currencies for example would you accept wire transfers if you would which countries would you accept or reject these wire transfers from right what about third party payments right do you plan to undo how do you plan to undo third party payments would you accept monies from third parties would you let third parties pay into your platform right um just a lot of questions. How do you plan to handle users with multiple chargebacks? Uh, would you allow third party withdrawals, right? Third, uh, what level of authorization would you put in place if you're allowing third party withdrawals? Would, it, would you put pins? Uh, would you ask for pin? Would you put two, uh, would you ask for two factor authentication? Um, these are just a lot of the questions that you need to ask yourself, right? That would help you. These are the questions that you need to ask that would help you prevent fraud. Right, and that would curb fraud on your platform. Right, uh, even as a young startup, you must try to understand that your you must try to understand your user base quickly. Right, the best way to combat fraud is by understanding patterns on your platform. So you must be agile and vibrant. Right, as as a compliance team, you must be agile, very agile and vibrant. You must look for trends and always ask questions. Um, um, be happy in public when <laughs> when deposits are increasing exponentially. But when you are done popping the champagne with your director's bar, um, you go back and investigate the source of funds, right? And this is like something that happens like internally <laughs> all the time, right? When the numbers are shooting off the roof, everybody's happy and we are all logging ourselves that we're making so much money as a company. But as a compliance person, um, you hundred percent should go back and look at those numbers again and be sure that um, be sure that the monies are really monies that that you should count as monies from your customers or monies that are useful to your business because. Fraud, fraudulent money is coming through fraudulent source, or if you are being used to launder funds, right? Um, in truth, you would end up losing more than the monies you've collected, right? Um, if you allow such on your platforms, right? Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is always um, uh, it is always in the time of plenty that fraudulent transactions are difficult to notice. So you just have to absolutely be careful. Then, um, lastly, right, um, like I like to say, right, you need to employ a smart head of compliance. I know these things are. I know we cannot stress this in anymore. I know it looks like I'm a compliance guy, so I, I, I'm just advocating for my people to be employed, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the absolute truth, right? Um, I, I, it's, it's. So, so something that we also like kind of just joke about a lot is that if you bring like um, five platforms on, if you bring like five different apps today, right? I can look at the apps and basically tell you the apps that um, the apps that the head of compliance or a, a smart compliance person was working on before the before when they designed their onboarding process and when they designed their processes and and, and an app that that they didn't probably get a compliance person until like later, later or far later, right? The difference is very clear, right? To designing eyes, right, is very clear. And if you understand this space very well, you understand how fraud, how, how, how fraudsters are very smart and how they think, how they are fired of a lot of these conversations that, that is already ongoing, right? You would understand that you need to bring a very smart head of compliance in very early um, to be involved in the process of building your whole onboarding and your your whole um, process flow end to end. That way, yeah. you would be able to put processes in place that can combat a lot of these things. The last thing I would like to say is about on uh, is on transaction monitoring. Right, you just need to continue to monitor transactions and continue to keep on monitoring transactions or uh, around the clock.